Professor Reno is the current professor and director of the Digestive Diseases Centers, Center in Shoah University Toyozo Hospital. I've shown you the building in 2002. It's completely different now, also under the leadership of Professor Inoue. And um, uh, I don't think I, I, I make an heresy if I say if there would be a Nobel in the, in the field of endoscopy. I think Inoue and uh, uh, other, but m m for sure you, would deserve that for the innovative techniques that you have been creating during the last uh, years. And currently is the president of the Japanese society. And uh, here, I think I also have to acknowledge the, the friendship for a long term established and uh, to continue. We have established uh, several uh, uh, fields of connection. And thank you. Thank you, Professor Inoue, for, for the lectures and for your friendship. Sir, thank you very much, uh, Mario, uh, for your kind introduction. So everybody knows uh, Dr. Mario Denis Ribeiro. He is uh, now the president of the ESGE. And the, I also appreciate uh, uh, both uh, moderators, uh, uh, Sergei Kashin, Dr. Sergei Kashin uh, uh, from Russia, and uh, uh, Stefan Zivout from Switzerland. And I also appreciate uh, the other panelists, uh, Yehagi Sensei, Yamamoto Sensei. So uh, please start my lecture. Hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, ESD in the esophagus and the stomach. This is my COI. Um, we have a lot of uh, uh, ESD pioneers among them. So as far as I know, uh, Dr. Ono is the first doctor who performs ESD. So uh, uh, recently, the marked advancement of the ESD technique is there are uh, using the traction so in our hospital we uh, use a technique of a multi-point traction so in our unit we prefer to use a very soft or uh, just attachment so we call this a space adjuster so uh, this soft cap uh, change its shape adjusting to the uh, target tissue so push endoscope, then we can create a good tension to the submucosal fibers. So in a good situation. But uh, in order to keep a good uh, counter-traction to the submucosal tissue, any situation, so we recommend to use a multi-point traction technique. Like this, uh, we fix uh, the snail wire uh, onto the edge, uh, proximal edge of the specimen using the uh, uh, several clips. We recommend at least three. Then, so like a light side, we close a snare. Even the lateral wing is a <clears throat> loaded, and then uh, keep tension to the uh, lateral side of the specimen. Uh, this is a sample. So first, we place the uh, uh, we bring the snare wire. Uh, alongside the endoscope. So we place the first clip fixation uh, onto the uh, uh, proximal edge of the specimen. Then next, uh, we place the light side. And then now we are placing the uh, left side, the third clip. So By placing this device, uh, we can uh, pull the specimen like this way. So our super soft food uh, give uh, also attention to the tissue well. Even the narrow segment, we can uh, come in. Then uh, we can make a, a good dissection. So this is another case. So lesion spread uh, semi-circumferentially of the surface. So in this case, we first place the uh, circumferential mucosal incision. Now we are dissecting using a splay coagulation uh, you know, the submucosal. And then, uh, 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 yes. 
circumferential uh, uh, mucosal incision was uh, made. And then uh, we, now we catch the snare wire by the um, disposable clip through the uh, channel, then bring it to the place. And then uh, we are trying to place a, a, a fix the snare wire onto the proximal edge of the specimen, first grip. Okay. Then uh, we place a second grip. Okay. Now uh, we are inserting the second grip and then uh, place the uh, second fixation onto the light wing of the specimen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now uh, we place it uh, uh, accurately onto the light wing. Uh, we can keep already keep a good attention. The third one is a left wing. So our uh, this uh, mark point traction technique or low uh, lift up the uh, bilateral edge of the specimen toward the uh, uh, luminal side. Then uh, we can keep a good tension to the tissue like this. And then specimen itself load and uh, uh, make it uh, compact. Uh, then uh, some mucosal dissection becomes very, very faster and safer because of the uh, some mucosal space itself uh, widen already. Yes, even a lateral edge. So usually a lateral edge is very difficult to dissect compared to the center, but so uh, mark point traction, the snare closure, makes the <coughs> lateral wing uh, load it up. Then uh, we can make a good submucosal dice. So like this way, uh, using the mount point traction and the snare closure, the uh, specimen itself uh, load up. And then uh, even the lateral side is widely open. So then uh, we can uh, perform the uh, relatively uh, uh, easy uh, some mucosal dis dissection even even in the left lateral light lateral side like this. At the very end of the procedure, <coughs> specimen because of the specimen becomes uh, floppy, so without traction it's uh, difficult to continue dissection, but uh, as long as we keep the uh, traction, uh, we can do it. So specimen is out, nearly circumferential. Uh, uh, ESD uh, has been done without any trouble. So uh, next, uh, I would like to talk about endoscopic muscle layer dissection. It's a deeper layer dissection than ESD, regular ESD. This is a case of the squamous cell carcinoma after RCT. Um, then uh, still the tumor remains. So iodine staining. So uh, ultrasonography demonstrate the uh, in between the two blue alloy, uh, the tumor invaded to muscle layer directly. We can confirm it. So in this case, uh, we do. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, uh, checked beforehand. This patient has no lymph node uh, swelling. So now we place a mucosal incision from a proximal. 
then uh, now we are approaching the place, the uh, uh, mark point traction, and then uh, approaching to the uh, beneath the tumor. So severe fibrosis because of the uh, previous uh, radi chemoradiation therapy. And the uh, uh, please note the uh, super soft food space adjuster, the change its shape, adjusting uh, to the uh, target tissue or uh, space. So now we are, are dissecting the uh, left side of the tumor. The muscle layer is uh, directly uh, attaching to the uh, tumor. In other words, tumor invaded to muscle layer. Yes. Injection to some mucosa layer. Uh, make a contrast. This is the center of the region, so tumor uh, is um, invaded to muscle layer. So carefully, carefully dissect the muscle uh, without uh, make an injury on to the um, tumor itself. Then finally, um, we can resect the uh, uh, lemon tumor uh, like this. So, bleeding uh, left side, bleeding point, this area is a muscle defect. But fortunately, our uh, muscle defect is a still limit uh, to the uh, circular muscle layer. So next, I would like to demonstrate the case of endoscopic sub cell dissection. This was first reported a Nanjing doctor. Uh, this is a uh, FNA uh, demonstrate this tumor is a, uh, a gist. Then the tumor size is very small, less than one cent around one centimeter, but uh, we decide we have to uh, uh, take out this tumor. So after injection, we place a mucosa incision. Then uh, after mucosa incision, uh, now we place a mouth point traction. Uh, snare wire is fixed on the proximal edge uh, of the specimen in the endoscopy image. Okay. Uh, we place uh, uh, normally three clips anyway, step by step. Then, so we are, up, are started to dissect. So traction works well to pull the specimen out. Now we are dissecting. Tumor is uh, uh, embedded uh, beneath the muscle layer. So we carefully dissect. This is a uh, uh, muscle fiber together with the very thin, very, very thin muscle layer, the upper part of the stomach. So muscle fibers, are, this, this must be a muscle fiber. Uh, we are dissecting it very carefully. Yes. In this case, very difficult to uh, differentiate the muscle layer and the sum equals other. Anyway, so muscle layer is going behind the muscle layer, uh, sum equals a tumor. Okay, just, okay, scoops the tissue up and then cut. At this moment, uh, we can keep always a good view because of the uh, counter attraction. Then, so now we dissect the muscle layer uh, in order to uh, in order not to make an injury onto the uh, capsule of the tumor because this is gist. Now we are dissecting the muscle layer. The finally, uh, uh, we we can uh, 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 preserve the uh, peritoneum. Let, uh, then, so behind peritoneum, you can see the surface of the pancreas. 
because this tumor is located as a posterior wall of the stomach. So after that, we close the mucosa uh, defect using creams. So last, uh, uh, I would like to mention a little bit about the full sickness resection. This is the, uh, uh, again, the submucosal tumor uh, in the gastric fornix. We place the mucosal incision first, then we place a counter-traction uh, using multi traction technique. Um, yes, uh, this is the first script. Then, uh, anyway, we pull the tissue up and then approach beneath the tumor. Okay, so in this case, a tumor invaded. Uh, this is the uh, GIST tumor, our uh, FNA approved. Um, then, um, now we are dissecting the uh, some tissue but at this moment in this case we have to uh, do the full thickness resection so because now you can see a uh, serous outside the tumor is uh, almost exposed to the serous layer size itself not big but uh, now we are dissecting the um, Yes, distal, distal end. So after dissection, uh, uh, we are going to the uh, peritoneal cavity. We can see a, a spleen. And then, so I think it's better to uh, watch the fluid away. Uh, during procedure, we don't touch uh, the uh, tumor itself, but I think it's better to wash the peritoneum out. Okay. okay. After this, we close the mucosa entry uh, using crypts. So left side is a specimen. Uh, this is a gist tumor. Uh, moderate risk. Four days after the procedure, uh, one and a half month uh, later. So everybody, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Now we can do the uh, ESD and its extended procedure uh, like this. So thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for this nice demonstration. Um, I have a question. Of course, uh, uh, we have been doing ESD without this um, multi-traction devices, but uh, well, all of us thought always about having this this kind of systems, and several attempts were were done. Uh, are you using now in a on a routine basis? That is, you you start training immediately immediately by introducing this for your trainees or do you still start the conventional way and then only in difficult cases you move to this method? Uh, thank you very much uh, Mario it's a very very important question so I recommend I recommend the traction technique to all the case so uh, this uh, traction traction is uh, we can accept any type of attraction device anyway giving the traction to the tissue uh, we can perform the uh, very uh, quick uh, ESD, quicker ESD, and the uh, I think traction is the uh, re re recently the, uh, the best advancement of the uh, technical advancement of ESD. I think yeah. so. I recommend to all. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, <laughs> we we have been trying to and struggle with that with the concept of not uh, using devices but i think more and more and I, I agree with you that more and more we immediately change to something that will help us either with a with a clip and a, and a, and a line or in this case uh, with the snare that you recently described i don't know stefan and sergey do you have any question um i think for our yes. audience is also very important to use this moment to have questions to the leaders uh, in the field Yes, I have a question, uh, Professor Noah. 
uh, what are the appropriate depths for the submucosal uh, dissection in uh, in some which uh, appropriate depths of uh, dissection? What uh, what are your tips and tricks? Uh, so, I, so Sergey, uh, your question is the uh, indication of uh, ESD. No, no, my question is about how to reach the appropriate depths of submucosal dissection in stomach. Uh, appropriate depths, you mean uh, in the submucosal layer, your question is? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, um, yes, so... Um, uh, the, the deep, a, sorry, uh, sorry, Haro. Uh, uh, what, what is the appropriate depths, uh, the deeper submucosal layer, um, and how to reach it? Ha uh ha. -huh. So, um, so normally, um, maybe uh, histologically, or uh, so when we perform the submucosal dissection, we have to keep the uh, two third, two third of the depths of the uh, from the surface, two third uh, depths of the submucosal layer. We have to, uh, we have a, a very among the uh, submucosal tissue, the two third. So we have a very um, uh, easy to uh, dissect e earlier. So uh, that is the best uh, depth uh, during ESD. So uh, we have to preserve uh, some connective tissue onto the muscle layer. Otherwise, so uh, we to if we totally expose the surface of the muscle layer, so it may cause the uh, sometimes a perforation, sometimes uh, some uh, muscle injury or something. So uh, I, I, even it, in a, a healing process, uh, uh, very shallow uh, connective tissue or uh, preserving is uh, uh, important, I think. So poem is a totally different. So at the time of poem, we approach uh, uh, very closely to muscle layer, or sometimes here uh, we dissect the muscle surface. So that's the difference. Thank you. Any questions, Stefan? You need to turn on your microphone, Stefan. Okay. Um, I was very impressed by this uh, endoscopic subsel rosa dissection and um, the treatment of these uh, small GIST lesions. Um, um, what do you think from, from your data or from your case collections? Um, the problem is always when we perform an endoscopic full sickness resection in a GIST and then it is a R1 resection, then we somehow have a problem. But um, um, with your accurateness and with your technique of ES, ESSD, uh, in how many of your patients you could achieve an R0 resection in small GIST lesions? Uh -huh. So, um, uh, for a large GIST tumor, so I think it's better uh, do it uh, by uh, laparoscopically. But, so one or two centimeter small GIST, um, at the time, so I think uh, we can do it endoscopically. So because the tumor size is limited, we can keep the uh, um, some distance from the surface to avoid the injury to capsule of the gist. So uh, we can we can uh, do it endoscopically, I, I think. Uh, but so uh, in some case, uh, sub cell dissection. So what I mean is uh, preserving the uh, serosa layer uh, dissection completed in some case, but. So I showed two cases. So both hmm. cases are small gist, one or two centimeter, less than two centimeter small gist. And the uh, one case uh, we can preserve the serosa layer. The other case we uh, uh, totally become the full sickness of resection. Anyway, anyway, so we have to talk to the patient. Uh, maybe it becomes a full layer resection. We have to talk it uh, before the treatment. Uh, then uh, uh, we can perform uh, the endoscopic resection. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Haru. It is now my great uh, honor to...